Right. So, so we've moved on from, from the introduction. And now we're getting to the body, which, as we know, is always the sexiest part. You must take your lead from the notes. Do not be too proud to take notes from the notes. To actually have another piece of paper there, you get 15 minutes reading time, and the highlighter is one thing, but it's not going to work unless you've color-coded it. So, otherwise, everything is going to be highlighted, and all of, us, and all of a sudden, this exam paper is looking yellow or pink, <laughs> right? So, have highlighters available so that you can really understand for yourself which ones you really must have in. Okay? Yes. So we've got a big question here. <laughs> Two. Fatima. Would you color code it by importance or how would you... Would it, uh, it? You would color code it what you definitely have to keep in. Definitely have to keep in. And what you definitely don't need. Because those are as good. So I was asked the question yesterday, or the day before, is it necessary to say if you're investigating um, an incident and you've checked all the aisles, this was an incident at pick and pay, and you've checked all the aisles, aisle number two has an L a a cleanliness problem, aisle number three has a cleanliness problem, and the rest of the store is, it the, is the other category that you're looking at, and they were fine. In your findings, is it necessary to indicate that the rest of the, cat, the aisles are fine? Yes, it is, because that's the full picture. Because maybe there are 20 aisles, in which case you could say the level of cleanliness based on those two aisles means that the whole store is not filthy, but those two aisles, they need attention, and we can now target those two and who looks after them, etc. But you see, it creates a full picture. So sometimes you do need to put in the, what is obvious, all right? It might be obvious to you. Opening paragraph sets the scene. We've just seen that. Use headings to guide your reader. These may come, come later, right? So or you might find that the heading you've put in afterwards because you need to actually establish some sort of framework. Tsepo. Um, so just a step back on the previous slide um, where she says, I have established that there are two options available. Um, you, you mentioned that it would be good to name the options. So say maybe either payout or reinvestment. Can you capitalize those um, words? So payout, you capitalize the P, and then or reinvestment, you capitalize the R. Do you find, it's a good question, but do you find that that is, uh, is the way in which they are reflected in financial literature with a capital letter? It's like, do you use a capital letter for mathematics? I always tend to do it, but we don't need to. But what you could do is you could bold it. Or you could... But you could do it if you wanted to, to make, to make it stand out. But I, I would, I think, standing, I don't think capitalizing on its own stands out. It looks like a mistake. You must be, you must be, you must commit to having, make, making it stand out. So it's either italics or it's bold. And then you go into that. And you go into that in exactly the same order as you mentioned it. So if you go using the pension, right, then that's the first one you're going to discuss. If you say the loan first, then that's the first one you're going to discuss because already the brain has been organized to receive it in that way and that's what we call parallel structure or development. Parallel structure, really, because development is with the argument. So say you've um, bolded it, pension um, or reinvestment, right? Yes. And then you're going into the body of the, the letter. Um, can you, when going into the different options, can you say um, pension and then put a semicolon and then maybe underline it? Or do you still need to keep it bolded? I would keep it bolded now, from now onwards. Because maybe I'm going to speak about that in one paragraph, that option. 
Option A, pensions. Option B, um, I mean pension payout. Uh, and option B, home loan. The bold uh, overkill. We don't need the underline, especially if it's bold, don't underline. If it's not underlined at all, I mean, if it's not bold, then underline is okay. But then, you know, it's just the indicator of the, of the hyperlink is what you Cool. So, move backwards from the conclusion, if you know it. Because you might get a question where you feel, I, I know what I'm going to say to them ultimately. I just don't know how to get there. And then you build up from that way, in that way. Right? <coughs> so let's go into it. Here we go. Have a look at that. It's very interesting. Let's take a step back again to what was said earlier about the many scenarios that we could encounter with the exam. So there was a question in May last year about climate change and so on, and res responsibly uh, uh, leading other companies to, to do, have good practice. So we, there, there is a lot going on in our environment that would change the way, that would, would possibly change the way you would respond to uh, clients if they want to do high risk investment because we're in, we're in a real trough at the moment. Okay? So those are things you need to bear in mind when, when you're writing an exam. At this point, this person has enough money, but would it be wise? I'm just thinking now, in the current scenario, Nothing certain about whether your pension will still be there almost, right? These things, these questions come to mind. Okay, so let's get back to looking at exactly what is here. Option one, finance your home using a mortgage. That thinks a lovely heading, right? And actually, the primacy, which means the first thing that they mention, often is the first thing that we will remember. So this is what we call the primacy effect, and I think that you would lean towards getting the person to get a home loan, right? More than using their pension. Okay. So, this amount, it would have been good if this amount will come from your net income after paying income tax. Um, I think that in this exam, you were given some indication of Yes, and, and, and the earnings, etc. You could actually tell what she would have over. I think there was something like that. So, so, so this is not the full picture yet. So hopefully there will be a, a fuller picture by the end. And this is quite a statement to, stay, to make, but based on the notes, the notes allowed the candidate to say, the chances of it being higher than 9.4% are very low. All right, so there it is to answer your question earlier on about the maybes. Okay? But importantly, the actual interest may be higher. You see this. So you are being truthful. Okay. Then option two, what about option two? Cash in your retirement savings and replace it by opening a savings account. I would imagine that the, these two headings, which I like very much, come straight from the notes. Okay, so I'm a bit worried about the last statement which says, however, the chances of it being higher than 9.4% are very low. Um, cause in an you mean the very low? Yeah. The very. Would you take the very out? Um, or you would rather say it are slim? But not only that, but in an exam situation, unless one is modeled the prime for the next 20 years, won't that be called a bit of a factual... In, uh, they, 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 they had covered themselves in the notes. 
because um, a lot can happen in 20 years. It can, but now, now this is fantastic what Tafar is going into here. It's too much detail. And then you're going to get stuck in that detail in the exam. And the exam said, the exam gave you the boundaries of where you should be looking. And the exam gave, the exam notes from the examiner, they stated that you could, that, that this would be the case. So you have to accept that for the sake of the scenario. But you're quite right. It's a difficult thing to do, to model. It is. You are perfectly right, technically. But if you dwell on that too much, then you will come, you will have tension in yourself as you're writing it. And to, I want to tell you to eliminate that because it goes against your expertise, perhaps. Maybe this is the field you know very well, right? And you would not do that. And you've been trained in this way. This is the exam. In the exam, it's on its own, in its own world. So what did it, didn't it say there? Have you got the notes there? Um, I just put the past papers. Oh the, oh, the examiner's report. You don't have the exam itself. I've got the exam and the examiner report. Both have both. Okay. So the exam, look at the notes there. I think they did say that. If they didn't say that, then you're quite legit in saying what you just said. All right. Chaka? I know personally I would like to know the exact figure, but I don't think it's... Is it appropriate to... Can we not just say maybe uh, approximately 18,000 rand? Um, because that's... No. You must have the exact figure here because she wants to know how it's going to affect her pocket. She does not want the approximation. However, if they didn't say that she wanted to know that, it would have been okay. But it is 171994, but then you won't then you would have said if you say approximately then eight approximately is give or take 500. It could be 18500 or it could be or 18200 or what have you and yeah. And if you get that um that calculation wrong. Uh, how material is it in, in terms of your exam? Okay. And if your logic follows throughout and you've based your answer on that and it's marginally different from the correct one, it's no problem. Okay? So don't worry about that. So if it's not exactly right, it's okay. But this actually was correct, I think, at the time. I think it was. Okay. So I'm hoping that you're feeling, okay, now I don't need to worry about these things I, I, because sometimes maybe you have come across this situation where it feels, it, it, sits, it doesn't sit well with you, that they've given you something that you can say will be the case and you know it won't, might not be. So, Fatima. I just have a quick question. Um, the 9.4% per annum in exchange of the loan, is it not supposed to be for, in exchange for the loan? Yes. Okay. And I also want prepositions, yes. So, so, so we wouldn't mark you, wouldn't lose one mark. That will come out the general pool of your language. Okay? That's not going to be one mark. We don't mark that way. We will ask ourselves at the end of the day, even if there was one preposition wrong, was the overall message clear? Okay, because prepositions are nasty. And also, wouldn't it be better to consolidate both the thoughts of the 9.4% and say, like, have it in one statement that they will charge this in exchange for the loan and the chances of it being higher are very low instead of having two separate thoughts. I tell you something. If the notes were explicit about the 9.4, then the technical marker would like to see it singled out. The technical marker doesn't want to go fishing for it in a paragraph. Your... I would argue also that in this case, it may, may re, reiterate or emphasize the 9.4. Okay? So, but uh, just have a look at the notes. It might be that that works. But I find that that single, these two sentences work for me because it's, it, it's, it's going to be juxtaposed against this huge gap I'm going to make in my pension especially the way the actuary would have calculated it, right? Because in, in the layman's terms, whoopsie, they just want to see, uh, they, they're just thinking, I just have to put that money back. 
but they're not thinking about all the interest that you would have lost okay, over the years that you've been building that pension. Okay, so wealth spotted there with the preposition, and, 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 and also that's why you need to check your work. Tafara, you've got a question? Okay, my question is, um, so, uh, sorry, I'm still stuck on that last statement. Uh, it says, importantly, the actual interest rate may be higher than the one given above, but um, will the client then know exactly what that means in relation, because uh, you mentioned that she's more worried about that uh, cost per month. Yeah. So if someone doesn't have financial knowledge, would they know what if a higher interest rate means? In, won't it be better to just say the actual int, uh, uh, installment might be higher than the one? It, then speaking to the installment and not the interest, because now if you mention just the interest will be higher, then that person will have to know exactly what that means in relation to the actual installment per month. But there's another thing. It also explains... Mrs. Mabene understands how her home loan works. And that's, that's very well asked, right? But that, it does say there. If you look, you'll see something that says that. So a good examiner would have put that in to state so that you don't, don't, don't feel that you have to over-explain. So, so because she, has, she knows how her own home loan works, so that is, um, I think that it's, 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 if it's not specifically stated, it's, it's actually uh, implied somewhere in there. Cool. Taka? Just a logistics question. Is um, spell check and grammar check yes. allowed in the exam? Well, you, you can use it. You can use thesaurus. You can use anything there. You just can't use the internet. So go for it. Okay? You can use... The, the two bar, the spacing, etc., etc. So the spacing here was fine, I felt, okay? The acted notes like you to make two uh, spaces. But if you've got a, a letter of 600 or 700 words, it makes it very long. And then the person who's reading it has what we call reader fatigue. And then they, they're having to retain everything, and there it is at the end. So rather, you have single spacing and then, okay. I, I like, I, I don't mind one and a half, but never two here, and not a double here. One is fine. Okay, good. So let's have a look. Also, I don't think this is correct. I don't know if it's correct, t uh, technically. Because it's not 0.5 million, right? I think it's 33. It was at the stage, it was 33. So it was 33.3, the tax. Oh, the 3 million, okay. Oh, it was the 3 million, but on the 3 million, it was 33, I think. So look at the technical uh, answer here, okay? That needed to be correct. All right. Um, so this needed a lot of explanation. You can have a read of that quickly. This is um, blued out because it's, it's a separate section that we're going to look at. I see lots of uh, discussion there. Okay, so two things are happening right now. I think predominantly what's happening in your minds are the calculations. All right, so Tafar has got... This is your field, eh? Is it? Uh, yes, uh, I was in this space for a while, sorry. So, uh, yeah. Um, so I'm not worried about the calculations. I mean, that's easy peasy. But the, the, I'm worried about the language because yeah because it says recommendations um but if i look at the question it it it, it, it says recommendations so it's more like you now with it plural or singular because you are recommending it's not two so it's not like recommendation one and recommendation two then the client will be confused of which so okay. that is at the end on after recommendation that, that's what is me so okay. yes. would i lose a mark no you wouldn't lose a mark as such it would be that what my what bothers me is that it's I don't was was the person meant to recommend? Did was it clear that it was a recommendation? What did the note say? 
Mbappe's uh, so draft a letter, approximately 500 words, explaining the options available to her and giving your recommendation as to which option to choose. So it is, right? So that's unusual. But it would be recommendation and conclusion. You're right. Because it isn't recommendations. But then it's going to taint the overall impression. Just a little. Okay. What, what is worse for me is, dear madam, it's so interesting that dear madam, and, and yet the tone of the body of the, the letter is very nice and warm, but the dear madam is just out of place. That bothers, the, the first thing the person gets is a, like a, a rudeness, but then this other tone is, is, is good. So it's, it's hard for, the, for us to see that. Um, for me, I'm at a stage where I'm worried which, which mistakes cost me marks and which ones do not cost me marks. I think that's where I'm trying to get to. Because in terms of doing the calculations in the exams, I'm not, um, like calculations, I've, I've got no problems. But look, so sometimes I worry if I put a full stop here, will that cost me a mark or not? So if I, yes. But look, if you have a habit in the whole letter of, not ha- of having incomplete sentences let's say, um, and, and not putting the full stop, then it's, it's a problem, right? Because now it's, it's a trend in the letter. It looks like it's, a, it's an error that you always make. So that's... The, and and you, you would forego that when you, as a reader, you can, you can have an error or two, but not lots of them. Okay, so it's, that's not what's, what's holding you back right now. Zeppo? I, for me, I just don't like the way this person speaks. I don't understand anything. But anyway, what would you say for the dear madam? What would you replace that with? Dear Mrs. Mabena, it's all good because we know her name and she's been a client for a while. And I'm actually looking into her finances. Yes. I just wanted to say, like, reading this part, it, this is something that I would actually type out. But when I'm reading it now, I'm like, it's too many numbers. Even though I know, like, from a technical background what they're trying to say. And I don't know how else we would be able to say it without too many numbers. But I'm already exhausted, like, just reading that. So I can imagine Mrs. Mabena would be, even though she has a general understanding, she'd probably pause at, like, sentence three and be like, wait, wait, what? And then go back to the beginning. So I don't know if this is in your... um opinion was this good or is there a better way to maybe give like even if it's just one number or just two to summarize it instead of having her say place a short form of two point five minutes and then you're gonna earn around twelve and stuff and then now she's thinking like all these numbers. I don't know if there's a better way to to write it out. I um I hear your concerns, right? And Resejo has got some questions there as well. Is it exa- related to that? Okay. Um I hear your concerns, but the note said, look, she's, she's earning well. So somebody who's earning that well and is considering a second home is going to have a certain amount of financial literacy and ability to handle this, I think. That's what I feel. And the fact, Rosejo, you've got something to say. It's linked to this. Also, in the question, they say that she already has an existing mortgage loan, so she kind of understands how things work. Well, that's what I was referring to earlier. Thank you. That's exactly the point. So she does understand how a mortgage works, right? So that was good um, for, for that. The thing is that we are looking at it in isolation. If you saw the, saw the question just like that, and we are really looking at the nitty-gritty here, the detail that this person has, has given, I want to be able to read it as if I am Mrs. Mabene, and then I can go back to the letter if there's anything that I want clarity on. Right? So I can... But ultimate clarity would have been to put maybe these two together, the 25 minus the 17, or whatever it was. It would be so much more if you... Some people did that. They didn't give this figure, but they gave, it'll be so much more if you wanted to do that. Right? If you wanted to go with that option. Tucker. Is it possible in the exam to quickly summarize the information into like a neat table and then explain the table? Yes. Very nice. Because the table is such a good reflection of figures. And then you can show with the red or whatever, another color or something, um, this, is what you, this is what you're looking at. This is the difference between the two just to highlight it. Yes, Grace? 
I'm just wondering about the recommendation part. Okay, let's go to the recommendation. But I just quickly want to highlight one more thing, Chris. So importantly, if your separate savings uh, plan earns an interest rate which is lower than 12.7%, you face the possibility of being unable to re fully replace your retirement income, right? Now, do you notice that this, this comes after that explanation and we also had an importantly after the other explanation? So I thought that was rather neat. It spoke to the planning and structure of this piece and it, it gave... Uh, the line, the thing that matters most, perhaps. So I thought that was good as a layperson looking at that. So we're going to see the recommendations. This is the conclusion, uh, in the conclusion, right? Which is what you have a comment about. So this is important. Check that your ending aligns with your beginning. Write the close first if you know it, is what I said. Draw the threads of your writing together and allow time for distilling. So when you do the sec, go to the other question, come back to this one and check if it makes sense to you, okay? Now, let's have a look at that. Thank you, Grace. What have you got to say about this? Okay, uh, my question was going to be, or my comment rather, was going to be on, as much as the question is asking the uh, person to give a recommendation to the client, is the tone correct in saying option one is the best option for you, or is it supposed to, uh, are they supposed to, state that they recommend, is, would that be repeti uh, repetition because they already... It's because the language here is imperative. An imperative is an action, right? You're, it's like a command. Option one is the best option. That is clear. Recommendation, we should have had recommendation and conclusion. You don't have to... Or you could have repeated yourself, I recommend to... but. But I'd, I prefer it if the person hasn't said I. Right? The person that says option one is the best because I've shown you it's the best. Not because I've shown you, not because I'm saying. You see, that. Just that little difference, I think. So it doesn't affect the tone because I feel like it's a bit... Did you find it too forceful? In this case, she wants clarity. So it's fine. And, and my goodness, she'd be crazy to go for the other one if she wanted to replace her, her retirement funds that, in that way. Okay? So the acted notes, they say, I trust. They believe, I hope, is too sort of uh, wishy-washy. They say that trust is more, um, is stating it more positively because the thing is that I've ho I hope you've understood what my explanation may mean did I actually explain adequately enough? That's how they interpret it. I sometimes find I trust to be a bit offish because we are prone as South Africans. We, we softies. We like to use the word take care. I hope you're okay. Um, I hope this is all right. We, we like that. We, are almost, we have it in our culture. We're almost apologetic, right, in, in our way. But um, the, trust, the trust is okay. But for me, I wouldn't use that for your family or something like that. Okay? In terms of word count, um, when they say approximately, so the question says approx approximately 500, and when I was looking at the solution, they had around 540 words. So approximately, what's the, ball, what's the ballpark if you're given approximately? Well, they would have made it uh, 50 each way, I suppose, back then. So they would have been leeway. And then you would get less if it was beyond either side of that. But strictly speaking, um, so, so you would go with 10%, but sometimes they go with a little, if, if they're specific, it's between a range, right? Then definitely anything outside of that range, the minute you go outside that range, you lose two marks. So what discretion should we use when they tell us approximately 500 words, um then I think 50 either side is, is our ultimate, is the, is the max. Nothing less than that. Um, we, hi. So we were wondering, um, when you count in the words, do you count, say, like 9.4%, like what is that? Is that three? Does it... Well, you use the word, the word application to do the counting for you, but you don't count the, the subject line. I think you, you, I, no, it's from the subject line. It's from the subject line. They tell you where to count it from, but from the subject line to the close. You don't count the dear 
on, and the closing. And yours sincerely. The numbers come up. If, if a number is like, if there's no space in the number, there's a space. So that's one and that's two. Uh, it's, 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 it's space. It's, 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 um... Okay, you'll have to look. Check. So just check that for yourselves, all right? Uh, that when there are lots of figures. And they will take the word count in the table as well. But if you have a graph, they won't count the figures in the graph. They will only count the words in the graph. Because you can have lots of numbers in a graph, right? Okay. But usually there are enough words. You have to worry when it says it's about 500 and you're sitting on 350 or 400. Or you're sitting on 650. Okay. Then something, go back to the notes. <laughs>